Hello, friends. It is me, Person Guide Man. In this video, I'm going to show you an app that I've been working on in the last couple months, maybe a bit over a month. I'm pretty excited to share this with you guys because I've wanted to make this app for a while. It's still a work in progress, but I guess I'll just show you what I have so far. And besides that, I also want to talk to you about free and open source software, which is something that I've been learning about quite a bit in the last year and I've become quite a firm believer in I would say so yeah let's get to the video this is the app in front of you uh, I'm just running this in an emulator on my computer doesn't look like much right now but I'll walk you through it so as it says it's a stat tracker so I use this for tracking statistics these are mainly things that can be tracked daily uh, let's say if you go to the gym and you want to write down stuff you do, um, like the different exercises you do. Maybe you want to track movies you watch, you could write that down and uh, the date you watched it and all the different details. But let me just start with an example. So it says create a new stat category. If we uh, click on the drop down, there is the option to add a stat category. The UI eventually will probably look a little bit better, but for now this works, I think. Right now I'm mostly working on features. So this, let's say, I already use this app quite a bit and uh, one category that I use probably the most is the stuff I do at the gym. So let's write down gym. And then if we open this stat category, we can see here, uh, this is the screen where we will see our entries. But of course, right now we don't have any entries. So we click the plus and that opens the add entry menu. Here we can select which sort of stat we want to add. For now we don't have any because I just created the stat category for the gym. So let's create one and let's say this is going to be push-ups. There is no unit of measurement for this. Push-ups is just a number. Uh, so let's add that. Uh, value, let's say, I don't know, let's say 20. Alright, and we click add stat and it puts it over here in the list. Uh, we can delete it if we want to. Uh, it'll just kind of go away. And here it's just showing push-ups because right now that's the only stat type that we have. Uh, so yeah, let's add that back. And now uh, it's not selecting push-ups because we've already added that. So let's create a new category. Let's say we're going to do distance ran. If you're running on the treadmill, for example, and I'm going to use kilometers as the unit of measurement. So we add that and then we don't need to add the unit of measurement for every single stat entry uh, for distance ran. It'll just know that uh, kilometers is the one that's needed. So let's say that we ran five kilometers, add that and you can see it says five km for kilometers. That's the unit of measurement. And it also sorted it alphabetically. And just for good measure, let's add something else. Let's say, I don't know, squats. And there is no unit of measurement for that. Let's say we did 50. Add stat. So it automatically uh, selects the current date, but if we want to change it to something else, let's say you forgot to enter what you did yesterday, uh, you can scroll back and do June 22nd. Uh, but let's just leave it as what it is. Uh, we can add a comment. Let's say was an easy day. Something like that. And then we can add the entry. And there you go. Uh, here's our screen with all the entries again. And it shows every uh, stat that we entered. The comment uh, in a bit of a smaller text and the date. And here we can delete it if we want, uh, ask it for sure. If we click on it, it lets us edit it. And we can then click on any specific stat, edit it, put it back. Yeah, just lets you edit everything. And then we can of course add another entry. And of course it will remember the stat types uh, that we have created. So let's say that I ran again on June 24th. And this time I did six kilometers at stat. Uh, let's say I did not do push-ups. Let's say squats. I only did squats, but not push-ups. Add that and add entry. And there you go. We have the different entries. Eventually, I want to add more features uh, like, for example, let's say you want to just see your stats for the distance you ran. 
you could, there's going to be another button, a filter button over here, and there you can select uh, if you want to see the distance you ran or like some other stat type, or maybe you want to just see your personal bests. Yeah, I want to add all of those features eventually, but for now, this has a much more limited feature set. And yeah, this is basically it. I don't think there's much else for me to show. Uh, it's persistent, so it saves it on the phone. Eventually, I want to make it so that you can also make an export file uh, in the JSON format to make it possible to back it up. Uh, because right now, if I lost my phone, I wouldn't have any backups and all of my data would be lost. I also use this for other stuff, uh, various hobbies. Um, I do hiking, so I have a snap category for hiking. I do other things, I do blood donations, uh, I write that down. Yeah, I just find it fun to just keep track of my stats. And uh, with Jim specifically, because I've been doing this, it's kind of encouraged me to do more. I can see what my best result uh, was, and it motivates me more to try to improve on that. I'm also happy to say that this is actually my first ever open source project. So this is the GitHub page for the stat tracker. There's not much here for now, uh, just the code. The readme just says what it is. Uh, eventually I'll flesh it out and make it explain what everything is, how you can download it. Eventually, I really want to put it on uh, F-Droid, uh, which is the open source marketplace for apps. Um, well, not really a marketplace because everything is free, but yeah, it's the open source app for Android that lets you download other open source apps, basically. And yeah, this is completely free. You can see it uses the GPL 3.0 license. So if you wanted to use my code for something else, you could, although I don't see why you would because this is nothing that interesting in my opinion. I'm using React Native for this, by the way, if you were a developer and you're curious. As I mentioned before, it is just a work in progress for now. I don't even have release uh, APKs yet. Eventually, I'll put them on here once I can make uh, signed APKs and once it's in a better state to actually release, uh, I'll probably make a video about that when it's ready for release. But the main reason I wanted to share this in this video was because I really wanted to share my excitement about open source software with you guys. There's a reason that I really wanted to make this app open source. I strongly believe that software should be open source in general, and there are a lot of projects out there that you may actually not know are open source. For example, the software that I'm using to record this very video, OBS, is open source itself. The software that I use to make my thumbnails is also open source. This is called GIMP. It's basically like Photoshop. Uh, there are a few features that are missing that are available on Photoshop. But honestly, at this point, I think I prefer GIMP. The software that I use for editing my videos is also open source. This is Kden Live. This is probably the best option for an open source video editor out there, at least as far as I know. And yeah, this has served me quite well. I used to use Vegas Pro, but because I, of course, don't have the kind of money that it costs to actually get the proper license. I pirated it all that time. But now I just use this and it's completely free. So there's nothing to even worry about in that sense. And probably the most notably, this very operating system, Linux, is open source. What this means with all of these different pieces of software is that the code is publicly available, which means that other developers can benefit from using that code. They can try to modify it. Some people can send in improvements. You can also send in requests uh, for certain bugs to be fixed or for a feature to be added. Uh, this is an issue that I opened on GitHub for the simple music player for Android where I showed them some bug that I found and they fixed it as you can see here and they mentioned the issue and they closed it as fixed. And yeah, perhaps you could report a bug to Microsoft or Google, but I would imagine with how massive those corporations are, it would be quite difficult to get across any message uh, through to the developers. But hey, I could be wrong about that, but I think it's undeniable at this point that there's a lot more interaction in the open source community between the developers and the users. Another positive of open source software is that the code is publicly available, so that means that if there's any sort of tracking 
somewhere in the app. It could be uh, found out uh, by different developers or security researchers. This, for example, is an alternative YouTube client for Android. Uh, it's called Newpipe, and you can get it from the Ftroid uh, store that I mentioned earlier. All of the code is right here on their GitHub, and you can see that it has 19,000 stars and 2,000 forks. This part means that uh, some people have copied the repository and have perhaps uh, made some changes to it. So all of this suggests that this code has been looked at, at least to some extent. On the contrary, if you look at the YouTube app, there's no way to find out what is in the code. They could be tracked in all sorts of different ways and just not know about it. And then there's also just a nice benefit that this has a bunch of the features of YouTube Premium just for free. I believe another benefit is interoperability between different open source software. Because typically if you use one piece of software from one company, they will likely make it so that it will be kind of difficult for you to leave and switch to the same software from another company. However, with open source software, there is no incentive to do so. So a lot of the time they'll use the same protocols and the same formats, and you would just be able to switch from one app or one piece of software to another one. And then lastly, there's also just the benefit that most of the time with open source software, you are in control of your data. And that is really a, a whole topic for another video about data and privacy and all that stuff. So if you agree with it, you agree with it. If you don't, you don't. But at least I hope I might have changed your mind on open source software versus proprietary software. So I guess the best way I could conclude this video is to suggest some open source alternatives to software you may already use. Of course, I've already made a big video about it, but if you are on Windows and perhaps you are having second thoughts about switching over to Windows 11, maybe you could consider switching to Linux or if you're hardcore, maybe even FreeBSD. FreeBSD is also an open source operating system. For your browser, I would recommend either something based on Chromium. Chromium is developed by Google, of course, but it is open source. My suggestion would be Brave Browser, if you want to go that route, or you could also go for something based on Firefox, which is also open source, but made by Mozilla. I personally use LibreWolf, which is what you saw me using earlier in the video. If you use a password manager, which honestly, if you don't, you really should because reusing passwords on different websites or even small variations of the same password is just not the best. I would recommend KeePass XC for the computer, or if you want to use it on your phone, on Android, for example, you could use KeePass DX. For an Office suite, which is basically what Microsoft Office is, I would recommend LibreOffice, uh, which is free and open source as well. Uh, it has the alternatives to all of the Microsoft products, all of the main ones at least. And as for phone apps, of course, I mentioned Fdroid multiple times. There's a bunch of alternatives to all sorts of proprietary apps on there that are all open source. It does not host any proprietary apps. And yeah, I would very much recommend Fdroid. Although perhaps you should install NeoStore instead of the official Fdroid client because it is more secure and I think a bit easier to use. But all of the same apps that are available on Fdroid are also available on NeoStore and even some extra apps if you enable the additional repositories. Some of my favorites are Newpipe, Fritter, Aegis. Anki is also on there because if you didn't know, it is open source. And lastly, I would highly recommend the suite of apps from Simple Mobile Tools. They have all sorts of different apps like a gallery app, a music player, a voice recorder, a calendar, all sorts of different stuff. So I guess that about does it for this video. Something that I mentioned in my past videos, which is also open source software, is library. And the most popular client for it is Odyssey. So if you would like to watch my videos without Google snooping in on everything you watch, you could follow me on Odyssey. You can find a link in the description of this video. Before I go, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, William and Minecraft Underground. Thank you guys for continuing to support me all this time. And thank you to anyone else who decides to become a patron. Now you guys are also supporting the development of my app. And I suppose in the future, I might work on some other software. So thank you guys. And now that I'm done with university, I hope that I can deliver more videos to you. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.